Welcome to the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, April the 26th, 2020, and we're going to talk about Acre, A-K-E-R, A-P, Facebook, A-M-D, I-N-T, and special little bonus play, we're going to save for last, Miss Vegas. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hopefully you're staying home and staying safe. I know it's boring, but, uh, you know, find some things to do and uh, start some new hobbies. Maybe you'll start uh, making some new recipes. Um, so I just want to quickly update everyone that um, you know, Governor Como was saying this morning that the uh, some manufacturing could be restarted May 15th or later in certain areas. Also mentioning that phase one reopening will be determined from May 15th onward. And also said that hospitalizations are lower again. Very good news for New Yorkers. So lots, you know, people are wanting to go to work. And I think it's great that the numbers are lowered and, you know, making progress here. So hang in there, everybody, because uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. So we're going to get right to it and start with Acre. So we can see here that Acre, um, this chart is just amazing. I love it. It has support at the 20 day. It has been up nonstop three days in a row. And I like what this company does. I mean, first of all, they are related to coronavirus. Um, you guys know that they did have, um, they did mention that they had some progress in their development for the COVID-19. And they also had a uh, 4.6 million offering back on April 7th. And then the next day they had news saying that they have a collaboration with Primaz Biotech, and they've successfully completed a second milestone, which is the um, completion of apparently three coronavirus antigens. And so um, they believe that, uh, you know, they're making some progress here with some successful expression is what they're talking and referring to, and that they were selected for their vaccine candidate um so i think that's really good news definitely like this weekly chart and um they did mention that they're very happy this was comments from one of the co-founders uh praduba kundu and he mentioned very happy to announce their success in expressing all three antigens they continue to believe that the immune system is better served with three shots on goal and their inclusion of the antigens together could enhance the efficiency of the vaccine candidate and they're very pleased with the expedited nature of their milestone so far which is a very positive uh, step towards to reach their clinical trials so i think their partnership with premaz is apparently executing very well and they look forward to sharing the next milestone apparently in the weeks to come my feeling is that this company, um, I love the weekly chart. I think there's going to be more news on this stock in the next few weeks. Um, just to mention one last thing about this company. They also very focused on infectious diseases, which as you know, COVID-19 is classified as that. They also are very involved in cancer and metabolic disorders and inflammation so they're very involved in many things so i think um from reading this press release there's more news coming on this stock so keep this on watch you may like it as a swing trade and i want to hear jim your thoughts on this chart because it looks really beautiful oh yeah definitely well, i'm looking at the year's chart we had a yearly high up around 21 dollars, and she definitely just had, she had an offering i just recently i think and she's closed back to, we'll look here at the, that was the yearly chart, so let's look at the 20-day. She had a weekly high, which I would say probably right around 798, and this is Acre. So it's had its nice little pullback, and it's kind of curved up, had a little good breakout Friday and pulled back Friday all day. So Friday, we wanted to break this resistance level right in here, right here on top. We're going to magnify this up a little bit. So we want this little spot to break right here. I say right at the 415. There we go. So if we can break 415, we'll bring it up to about 476. But I think we're ready for a reversal. It is kind of on the path with a triple bottom. 
maybe a double bottom play down here where she had that huge breakout and usually expect about a 50% retracement so anywhere back up in this next channel if we can break this resistance level of 415 476 and then a hard resistance right here right around 552 low support at 326 but the resistance we got breaks at 415 acre and the next one's AP Okay, so AP, you know, I've never traded this stock. This one here is Ampco Pittsburgh. I mean, they're very involved in the air and liquid processing, and they do a lot of manufacturing, and uh, they actually do a lot of work uh, for fossil fuel and nuclear power generation markets. They also do a lot of work with the United States Navy market, the pharmaceuticals, and the healthcare market. I got to tell you, this company has been around a long time, guys, since 1929. They're in Pittsburgh and uh, really impressive chart. I cannot believe I have not seen this chart before. And like I said, I've never traded it. But look at the action this stock has had since April. Uh, the company is this stock is on to me parabolic rise going on here. And um, I think you should definitely keep this as a watch on your list um they did have apparently i think some shareholder discussions on april 23rd um they're having a virtual meeting on may 7th is what they're going to be doing because normally you know with coronavirus they would have it together in the boardroom but they're doing a virtual shareholder meeting so that'll be on may 7th and so uh keep that in mind if you like the stock but you know what Aside from that, uh, this is looking really healthy chart, and I'm definitely going to look at it for a swing trade because this is just in a beautiful channel right now, and um, they did mention back in March um, that they're returning to profitability in the fourth quarter. They did a lot of restructuring, and they also showing some positive income from the continuing operations in the last 16 quarters. So, you know, this company... Um, has done a lot of restructuring in the past and it looks like it's working quite well and uh, looking good. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, again, I'm not looking to invest here long term. I'm just looking at this for a continuation trade tomorrow and also maybe looking at this also for um, a swing trade. The other thing too is that, you know, they had, they're also involved in the oil and gas products. So remember, you guys know that oil and gas is obviously a lot of people are trading it because they went down really low and they're looking to reverse so this is part of that sector as well and this is why we're seeing the activity as well so jim what are your thoughts on this amazing looking chart right now very beautiful we kind of have a little pivot point area here on the yearly chart at 383 and you can see that with this channel we were here in last year at between 342 and resistance level of 408 to 435 so we definitely busted past that pivot point area and I'm looking at that as major a major support level at 383 if it does be pull, pull back that's going to be your first right now we closed at 398 so that's not much of a pullback with a low support right around the 342 so let's pull up and the resistance long somewhere up in here between 435 and 448 so we're going to pull up the 20 day it's had a beautiful 20 day run and both of them have kind of stair up and they've sold off kind of uh, had that nice little breakout in the morning so you want to kind of guess where you think it's going to pull back and try to jump into the trade friday was a little bit different it kind of broke out and then had a bounce oh for about three hours into the day and then created a little ascending triangle. So we have a little resistance level right here, right around. And I'm going to just put it on this hour. Somewhere around, I'm going to put it at 401. Because that's my lucky employee number. Between 401 and 408. And then your support level is going to be that 383. With that bottom support level right down here, right around between that 457. I mean, at 357 and 342, that'll be your low. And then you might be able to, you know, if it decides knife, no lower than this 
327 and that's a real strong buy that'd be about a 50 percent retracement so first support 383 that second one's going to be right here where we had that ascending triangle somewhere in this channel between 357 and 369 and then that third one with a strong buy at 327 with a resistance to break above 401 and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Facebook. Well, Facebook surprised a lot of people on Friday. And uh, boy, oh boy. You know, it's funny because I saw suddenly some serious action on Facebook. I'm like, what's going on Facebook? It's like going crazy. And so right away we took some cushion trades. And then shortly after, not right away, like I think I waited like an hour, uh, news came out. Uh, they announced a slew of new video calling features. They have the uh, messenger rooms, which allows Facebook and messenger users to create group video calls up to 50 people. They did have something like this before, limiting only to eight people. They were called messenger video calls. They could only have eight people. So guess what? This is giving a little bit of competition now to Zoom. That is why ZM pulled back. So apparently between the WhatsApp and Messenger, more than 700 million accounts participate in calls every day. It's what one of the VPs mentioned of um, the Facebook Messenger. And they also said that the rooms are obviously going to pose a threat to Zoom and to also House Party, which are two video calling products that have had skyrocket issues because of the coronavirus. Like Jim mentioned, everyone's basically you know, talking from home and videoing from home. And so Facebook had to step it up. And boy, oh boy, did they give Zoom a little run for the money there because uh, Facebook exploded and Zoom pulled back. So uh, very interesting. And Jim, let's hear your thoughts on Facebook because love to hear if it's going to be a continuation. And uh, as we know, uh, this week, um, you know, we'll see what kind of action this coming week. But man, it was a real... A real nice little surprise there. At, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Friday was a nice little pop. Yes, it was. And right when that news came out about Facebook, you could watch Zoom just blomp. I mean, it just tanked. And I was forgetting that feeling, you know, wow, 100, 180 bucks a share. And when she went all the way down after hours to 155, Zoom did. So I'm definitely going to be watching that for maybe another reversal, for maybe more of a pullback still yet but she's right i mean this is competition for uh another reason for facebook to break and go past 200 so let's look at the facebook chart here i'm gonna pull up the yearly i don't have it too chalked up kind of cleaned it up a little bit got a low support no lower than that 175 and i can't see it going back to that then the next one right around the 182 now if we hit that that could be a real strong buy then you got another support level, and I'm going to count it right in here, right in this area right here, right at 185.13. Magnify that up and see if I got that pretty good. Yeah, right on there. Pretty much. Then we got another one a little bit higher than that. So let's bring it up to the 20 day. I had some resistance levels right up here. It was real hard resistance to break. You can see it. Didn't want to do it on the second time. Then the third time, it created a lower high, and she dipped on down to that 170. So I'm going to put right around that 182 to that 185.13 area, maybe a little bit higher to that 185 to 186. You can almost put it at 186. Let's just put it right there, 186.04. So that's going to be your, your second support area. Your first one's at 190, 190.25. And if that doesn't hold, we'll get down to this other little resistance level we had right here between 185.13 and 186.04. And then you have a strong support right down here at 181.11. There's your three different support levels, resistance to break. This could be the news to bring it up next week, up to newer highs. 
and we need to break resistance level of 194 Facebook and then we've got another one AMD one of our other favorites well you know AMD reports earnings this week as well so this will be interesting to hear about AMD and and what is uh, Lisa Sue gonna have for us I mean you know they have the AMD Ryzen 3 and um, they're saying it's a champion CPU champion and um, I guess we'll hear more about that uh, they're thinking that this particular product that they're having is going to beat the Intel core i3 product down the road so you know, AMD is really competing with Intel and Nvidia so I'd love to hear what uh, that earnings conference call is going to be all about but uh, nevertheless uh, you could still trade AMD this week just up until prior to earnings uh, the charts looking really good it's got uh, you know looks overbought for sure but it definitely has some strength so Jim let's hear about AMD charts just you know people can trade for a couple days before the earnings come out oh yeah this has been one of our favorites we've always got it on our watch list we watch it every day and that's what you ought to be doing out there if you don't have your top 20 grab you one I do know on my that AMD is on that list and I knew that uh, one resistance level was at there at 52.24 and we had to double top that and then we broke out to them new highs which we had a couple months ago at right around 59.27 so we're kind of creating that same kind of flat we're creating a flag right here which I think it's going to tighten up in a day or two and try to break up these res next resistance levels and I've, we're just going to add another one in here we created last week, right around the 56. Right there. I got it from this thing right over here. Let's see how tight I was. Perfect. Let's see how tight I was there. Right there. Right there at 57.23. So let's pull up the 20 day. This is AMD. We've got a low support at 50 bucks. I'm still going to stick with that. If we get down there, it's going to be a real strong buy. That second support channel, or let's say our third support channel, is between 52.24 and 53.56. Then we've got to find us another one in here. And I'm seeing it right here at 54.55. So that's 54.55. And then that first one's right here, right around 54, 54. And then resistance to break to break on up is got to be this this high that we tried to make here last Friday. And that's right here. I really like that. At 56, 98, 57. So this is the channel we got to break between 57. 56.98 to 57.23 to bring it up to the next three resistance levels with a 20-day resistance channel of right around and that's going to be right in here right there could be a little bit lower but we'll call it at 58 58.52 to bring it up to that that 20-day high of 58.95 and that's going to be AMD so let's magnify this down one more time and see what we got this is on the 20 day 1 hour TTM trend chart with the four different moving averages the 200 the 100 the 34 and the 9 EMA and so right now we're setting up a flag where we want to break out either pull and we, we still want to keep that trend going where we have them higher lows. We did break it last week pretty hard pre-market, and we had a nice little run. But we did have a little lower high, so that, just a little concern. Resistance to break, 56.98 to 57.23 to the 20-day high of 58.95 or a strong support level of 50, anything above 50 bucks. And that's going to be AMD. I like it. 
And the next one we talk, we don't talk about it enough. It, we don't give as much respect as we should. And that's INTC. Oh, yes. You know, Intel, you know, a lot of people were a little skeptical about this one going into earnings because the day of earnings, I mean, the stock had pulled back after hours. And then, of course, the next day, boom, 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 stock's on the move. Uh, you know, Intel did release their first quarter financial results. You know, they made, this is a great number, $19.8 billion for the first three months of 2020. This is a 23% increase year over year. And the vast majority of their business divisions, um, which is the PC-centric and the data center groups included, they also saw gains. And you know what, Jim? What? This allowed them to pay their investors a dividend of a dollar thirty-one per share. Shut the door. Fifty-one percent more than what they did last year. So I gotta tell you, I mean, if you guys like long-term stocks, do your own due diligence. You know, obviously speak to your financial advisor. But Intel is something you know longer term you may want to consider. I mean, the stock is beautiful. I mean, it's priced really nice, actually. Um, very much in line with uh, AMD. So, I mean, between these two, I mean, take your pick or invest in both. But, I mean, I mean, the fact that the dividend is just such a great payout uh, was a great surprise for the investors, and they're very happy. And uh, the chart's looking nice. Again, I like that it broke $57. We did trade this as well. Uh, we had support here. We had a nice pocket pivot. And, you know, it moved because it's an earnings mover. The market was happy with the earnings and uh, very pleased. And so we'll see how this continues um, throughout the week, Jim. What are your thoughts on Intel? Well, I say we busted past a, uh, we also went below a yearly pivot point. And I'm just looking at the yearly retracement and that's above right now, which yearly is right around this support level right here. And it matches up pretty much right there at 5590. So, yeah, I'm going to put that little trend line is what the Fibonacci on the yearly thinks pivot point is with a 50% retracement right around 55.90. So, yeah, it's, to me, it looks like it had a little pullback Friday. And let's, let's look at it and see what happened here. We'll look at the 20-day. It had a nice little bounce. had a 20-day high, broke a double top resistance level. So the third time, said, so nah, I'm going to break it. Then we had that little crash, and she regained, and then someone pulled the rug out, rug out again under it. Thursday, right into close. And maybe this is a good one to have on my watch list to play off of support levels. It's bounced three times off this 5590. So you see right there, actually, you know, we had that huge gap breakout. One, two, three, four. And here we are, we're back up into this little resistance channel. This is on a 20 day. And that resistance channel is going to succeed probably right around this 50, 60, 82 area. If we get past that, we build it, and then you have a tight little wedge between that and around 61. And then she'd have to break and bend on back up to these next two, which is that. 62.58 and then that other one right here right around the 61.62 area but support for right now is going to be no lower than that probably is here 50 55.90 area with that 50 percent retracement on the 20 day and i can see that being right here at 56.80 and then that probably that second one right in this area here at 57.57 first support 58.84 with a resistance to break at 60.82 and that's intel and then we got the special bonus that i think is going to start being a buy again but we just gotta we just gotta kind of keep it it's on my watch list and that's boeing oh you know boeing is a cup stock to trade because it's had its nice pop uh almost two weeks ago we had a nice run to the 150s a little higher than that and we made very good money on those option contracts so many people bought them we saw the money flow we took the trade but it's never reclaimed 
that level. So Boeing's having a little challenge here, but here's what I want to mention. And then Jim's going to definitely go through those charts, but you know, Boeing had an agreement with Embraer and they terminated a $4.2 billion deal. And um, let me just see here if I can show you guys the news. Did I give you that news, Jim? I could show it to you here so you could show the viewers. Um, so there's the article um, Jim can show you guys. So they had an, a deal with the Brazilian aircraft maker called Embraer. And apparently uh, Boeing terminated their agreement in their partnership that they had planned to do. And the deal would have given Boeing a bigger stake in the market for smaller jets and help the company develop airplanes a lot more cost efficient. And Embraer is not happy about Boeing's decision to end this uh, contract. They said they will be pursuing all remedies against Boeing for the damages they've incurred. They call this decision a wrongful termination. Uh, the Brazilian company has said that Boeing's 730 MAX 2 fatal crashes have costed aircraft maker at least $18.7 billion. And they said that the company was manufacturing false claims to avoid paying the $4.2 billion because of their own financial conditions of the 737 MAX and other business and reputational problems. So they were planning to do a joint venture by April 24th, which was obviously on Friday. The deadline passed without Embraer satisfying the necessary conditions. And this is according to Boeing. They've declined to go into details about this. And the Brazilian company said it believes it fully satisfied the deal's conditions. So you know what? We're probably going to be suing Boeing. So uh, they're very saddened and very disappointed about this partnership not going through. They said that Boeing had productive, ultimately unsuccessful negotiations. So I don't know, they're um, not very pleased with what's happened. And I think there's going to be some more drama on Boeing. So I mean, uh, this is unfortunate because that would have been probably a good thing for Boeing and this company to have some capability to design smaller aircrafts. So I don't know. I don't know why they would uh, not walk away from a deal like that. A $4.2 billion deal. That's a lot. So, Jim, let's hear your thoughts on Boeing because I know a lot of people are watching this waiting for the big move they're waiting for that reversal and uh, boeing's on everyone's daily watch so what are your thoughts on this because a lot of drama has happened here first thing pops in my mind restructuring program so, something about restructuring boeing itself to have to turn down something like that so you know boeing we're going to be pulling up a yearly chart and we had a yearly high right up here right around 391 with a yearly low of $89 and we've kind of pulled back that much I think almost to a 50% retracement I'm gonna pull up this 20-day chart and hope we can get up to that highs right around 185.76 let's do that on the 20-day no not that high but she's definitely had a pretty good little sell-off we had a real strong support level right here, right around that 134.20, all the way up to 136.93, and it kind of di it didn't hold that, as you can tell, Friday, and setting up now to even go down a little bit lower. We were down 20 days ago here at 120.02, so can we double test that double bottom on a 20-day, one hour? The answer is, yeah, maybe. We could pull back to that 122.53 area, which actually I have a lower support right around the 121.29. Or we could consolidate the rest of the week and not go below this support channel of 128.61. So that's going to be the fight. You know, possibility, again, yeah, 122.53. Resistance to break is going to be right here. And then we're going to pull that up. Magnify this up a little bit. Right there at 138087. That's the resistance that we gotta bring to bring it back up to the other resistance channel, which now used to be a support, which now has become resistance. 
so we'll be watching that. We're either going to break this resistance level of 130.87, or we're going to pull back to these lower supports, and we get down to this lower channel of between 125.50 and that 125.50 uh, area. That's a three dollar um, place, maybe a very strong place to get in and start your little position for a reversal play back up to these resistance levels of right around 136, 130, or actually it's a little lower, right around that 133, 134 area to that 137. And that's going to be Boeing, and that's it. Low support. I hate to see it down here at 122. That'll be a strong buy. Resistance to break. It's going to be the pivot point. We're right around 130.87. If we can break that, we'll bring it back up to these resistance levels. Maybe up here to that 137. If we can break past that, that'd be pretty tough. But I think we're in a spot now where we really need to pay attention to it and set you a couple little uh, alerts for reversal play or just follow the trend. But I think we can get a bounce on this come Monday. We're going to see. If it gets back up to this area right here, at least to that 131, 13087 area. If it can get back up there, and it's or and it needs to break that, or it will pull back into them lower, which I think will be a real strong buy on Boeing for long term investment for its coming year. And that's it for the report. Please hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell for future updates and also on our uh, website we have a little um, thing right here It'll take you right straight to our twitter page and you can follow us on our twitter we're up to 1606 that's not bad miss vegas anything else no i just want to wish everyone a great trading week remember busy 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 earning season so trade safe trade green and uh, look forward to what Monday is going to bring us. And uh, I'm really just happy to hear that number of chronic cases is simmering down. So everyone has a great weekend and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day and uh, follow, subscribe and uh, talk to you guys soon.